Because I don't know of anything worse than being a coward. See, over in that part of the world, to be referred to as a dog is the worst thing you can call somebody. That says, well, I'd rather be a dog alive having compromised everything. At least I'm still breathing. At least I can still eat. But I don't want to die. Oh, but you're in the kingdom of God now. And there comes a time when you decide, this is it for me. I'd rather go down fighting for a good cause. Oh, a lot of things are coming in my head right now. Do you remember when David, the little shepherd boy, came up and he, ha, he saw the Philistines humiliating and intimidating the army of God? And the question in old King James says, Is there not a cause? I like that. David, just a little shepherd boy, said, Way! God's people over here, yeah, 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 and at them, everybody's scared of everybody. Everybody just talking trash, just throwing insults across the valley. Is there not a cause? Is this not worth fighting for? Is there not a man here ready to die for the cause of God? And see, that's what David lived by. The cause was not his own personal safety. The cause was the honor of Almighty God. And when he finally got down to the valley and old Goliath, I don't know where I'm going here. I've changed sermons all of a sudden. Let's have a good time for about five more minutes. Won't you? And old Goliath stood up and said, Am I a dog that you would come to me, a, a boy? Uh, am I a dog that you'd come to whip me with a stick? David said, You've come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I've come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel, and this day I will feed your flesh to the fowls of the air, and all men will know that there is a God in Israel. It was about God, not about him. It's not about you. It's about Jesus and the honor of his name. And you know what I like about that? Now watch, you find it in the Bible. See if I'm not telling you the truth. The Bible says, Goliath stood up. And when he stood up, David ran towards him. It was shock and awe. He was going to take him out first. He wasn't standing there talking stuff. He didn't say, who you think you are? Yeah, come on, you think you can want some of this? I can handle you. David said, nope, he stood up. Now he's going to die. Huh. See, we've lost that mentality of spiritual aggressiveness. We forgot to press toward the mark of the high call of God. The devil brings a bag of worry and we just fall down and let him pour it on us. But the David spirit says, you're not giving me that. This day, I will give this back to the devil it came from. You're dead in the name of Jesus. I'm trying to finish. So Eliezer took the sword and said, this is it. And he began to flail and swing and cut and kill and stab and decapitate until they were all dead and he was still swinging. And they grabbed him and held him down and they had to pry his fingers from the sword. Now, this is the New Testament. This is your sword. It's not in your hand. It's in your heart. And so when the devil comes in with his worries and woes and temptations and problems and begins to tell you what God ain't going to do and what He can't do and what you aren't, what you haven't been, what you didn't do, you take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and you sever His head, and you cut and you stab through all the darkness that He brings with Him. That's called the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And it's for anybody 
who's willing to kneel and pray until you pray through. I want to know, is there anybody in this camp meeting tonight who has been beaten up and drained, worrying about family or issues with the family? Stand up. Stand up. Did I tell you the truth tonight? Was I truthful about it? Did I describe how you feel? Would you come join me in this altar right now? Those of you that stood, would you please come stand with me? And I want to tell you while you're walking down steps and aisles, Jesus Christ cares about you. He heard your prayer. He sees your pain. He knows your exhaustion. And I'm going to tell you, again, I don't have any power in my hand. I'm a saved, spirit-filled preacher. What's going to happen tonight is that you're just going to be reminded in your complete exhaustion you're going to be reminded he's already brought you to this point you were tired then but he brought you here you're tired now he's going to take you there you're going to keep on pursuing you are not going to quit you will not lie down or turn around and you don't even need to slow down the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. All I want is some, some warriors. Oh, I know if we could see it spiritually. Some of you would have broken noses and blood would be trickling out of that nose and your eyes would be all swollen up and bones broken. You're a warrior. But I want to see how many warriors in this place tonight, in spite of your exhaustion, can join with me in just a moment and give a victory cry to our commander-in-chief. Move in a little closer if you would, please. I'm going to ask you to stand out there, please. I would also ask if there is a pastor that didn't come down. How should I say it? Let, just let me be honest. You're just tired. Just, just plain tired of the concerns in the ministry. You can slip down here too. Because brother, I can tell you, I've been there. That when there's nothing left, not a fume, not one scintilla of inspiration, and you have to stand up there week after week and inspire you people when you don't have it yourself. How does this work? Exhausted, but still in pursuit. Here's what I want you to do. All great armies have a war cry. I just want you to lift up holy hands. Don't ask him for a thing. Praise him for his faithfulness. <laughs> 